A very beautiful Tuesday afternoon from wherever you're watching. This is Jalango TV and the program live on air is Bonga Najelas. One of the most amazing conversations that we've been waiting to have with my sister Masi Atis. And she's here with us and just like uh, she always get, likes to say, I don't give up. Masi sanitize. Thank you. Thank sana. you. Karibu Asante sana. Asante <laughs> sana. I'm so wow. happy to be here. You are telling me you've been waiting for this interview. I've really, really wanted to come to your interview. Like, forever. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. I try to message you on Facebook, but I think you're more active on Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah. And yeah. even Facebook, we are active right now. Yeah. But I'm very sorry. But the best thing is that you're already here. I'm excited. I'm so happy. You're excited and you're so happy. Thank to you so much for hosting me, Jalas. <laughs> no. <laughs> Masi walked in and Masi saw me and the first thing was a big, big corona hug in Ikasema. <laughs> Who you sasa me talk about? She's just so happy and she's such a good vibe. And she just wants to share her happiness with you. Definitely be alive from Miali. Kenya's best restaurant in the 254. Have you ever been to Miali before? If you have never been to Miali, then you're missing and missing a lot. Even if you're talking about the ambience, the place where we are located on the convent drive, make sure that you can make your way here and enjoy the Nyama Choma at Miale. Enjoy their Miale special. Enjoy their Miale wet fry chicken and everything. What's your favorite meal? Um, I'm a Jaluo, so I will say samaki. Uh -huh. They have samaki? Uh, yes, they fish, have. Yeah, uh, fish. Amazing, amazing fish. Yes, yes. yes. So, unapenda samaki sana? Sana, sana. Uh -huh. Yes. So, we'll be having some fish today. Oh! Uh, of Miale, who are wow. our host. And we just want to thank the team at Miale for hosting uh, Team Jalas. We know we change venues left and right, but anytime we, you want to find us, you come home, and home is... Miale. Karibu sana Masi. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank Umetoka you, wapi sasa hizi ukikuja mbio hivi ukaniangukia na mahag mingi. Where, where, <laughs> where do you stay here in Nairobi? In Kitengela. In Kitengela. Yes. Wow. So ulitoka Kitengela uh, usangapi ndio ufike huku leo? Actually I left Kitengela and I had to go fit some gowns at uh, the amazing lady who is here with me. I went to Karen. Mm -hmm. And Sister Grace dressed me today. <laughs> and then from Karen, I went to this salon. <laughs> yes, this salon is uh, on Gong Road. Okay. Yeah, and she did my makeup. How does it look? Hey, you, you look beautiful. Oh, you look you. beautiful. And thank your you. smile is infectious. Thank you so much, Alas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah. You know, you've done so many interviews. Yes. But then uh, there are even people who are watching right now who already have watched you in other interviews. Right. But uh, there are people watching you for the first time yeah. who would like to share and just want to know mm -hmm. who you are. Right. Masi, where were you born? I was born in Kabura village in Siaya County. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's where I was raised in the village. I'm a village girl, Jalas. Okay. Yes. And then I went to Nia Girls High School. Mm -hmm. And after Nia... Uh, I was very briefly at Baraton University before going to the U.S. Uh -huh. Yes. So, 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 Nia, you know, Nia is a very top school. Eh? Yes, it is. I'm a smart kid. You're a smart kid. <laughs> yes, very smart. Oh, what, what did you manage to get in Nia? Ah, don't ask me that now, Jalas. Yes, but, but you said you are smart, yeah. Smart kids like me. Like, like, like me. You know me, I'm a smart kid. I got yeah. a C plus at Nyangoma Boys Secondary School. Really? A C plus at Nyangoma is like A plane in Star A. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay, so at the end of KCSC, I didn't perform as I really expected, but I got a C plus too. Oh, you got a C plus? Yeah, so oh, we are. Sanitize, my dear. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. So, so, so you finish at Nia. Yes. Then uh, uh, you go to Baraton. I go to Baraton to stay with my brother, not as a student. Yes. Oh, you didn't go to Baraton to stay to, to learn? No, no, no. I finished high school and the same day I finished high school, I went to stay with my brother. At the university? At the university. He was studying theology. Okay. Yes. And just two months down the line, he dies very suddenly. Your brother? Yes. Mm. Unexpectedly. He was... 23, he was a fourth year doing theology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I go home to his funeral and my family is like, no, we don't want you to go back to Baraton. Because they were scared I'm going to die there too. Wow. Yeah. What but had happened? 
uh, he just said he had headache and he was taken to uh, Eldoret Moy referral. And I remember I spoke with him at night, midnight, he said, uh, I'm doing good. You know, he liked a lot of jokes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you. <laughs> <laughs> he liked to joke a lot and he even said, Kafu P, talking to my friend. I'm coming home tomorrow. And so on Sunday, I'm selling Uji and Chapati to Mjengo workers. And people are looking at me strange. Me, I'm just happy, smiling, selling. And then when I go home, uh, I learned that where I was selling chapati is written behind me. We are sorry to announce the death of Pastor Vincent Odiambo Nyango. Like, there were signboards all over the university, but I didn't see them. So then um, I go to the house, and uh, my brother had a lot of friends. And his friends are seated like this, and I'm like, what's going on? And uh, nobody's answering me. Then I see like a group of pastors. Like so many student pastors, they are coming to our house and they are singing loudly and I'm like, what's going on? And he's still not thinking because I talked to Vin yesterday and I'm sure he's okay. And they burst into a prayer and they're praying, thank you for calling your, your son home. And I'm like, your son home? What's going on? And uh, they're like, uh, just praying, praying. And I'm saying, Vin is dead? No, he can't be dead. Like my brother's death was so sudden and so shocking. Like... At that moment, I just, you know, as a woman, uh, when you are so stressed, period comes. And I just remember just blood washing me all over. I was in disbelief. And my family was like, yeah, it was really sad, jealous. I'm very sorry about that. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's, there's a part you're skipping here yeah. that I really need to know. Mm -hmm. At what point at uh, Baraton did you start selling Muji? Immediately after high school. So after high school? My brother opened for me the Uji business. Okay. Yeah. Immediately. And just two months down the line. The same day I finished high school is the same day I went to Baraton. Okay. Yes. So you went to stay with your brother? Yes. He was and staying outside. Same, and campus. it's the same day he opened an uh, Uji, a Uji business? He opened for me a Uji business. So yes. you were selling Uji? And Chapati. And Chapati? Yes. To Mjengo workers? Yes, inside Baraton University. At that age, you are 18 or something? Yes, I'm around 18. Okay. And they still owe me to this day. Can you believe it? So Those people, they don't pay. They don't pay? No, when it comes to payday, they just uh, escape. They just help you, help you, help you. Well, how long did you sell you the Uji and Chapati? Just for a very short time until my brother died. So when your brother died after funeral, your family said, don't go back don't there, go you'll back die to also. Yeah, you'll die also. Mm. But then um, the Baraton administration calls me. You know, then the, uh, the VC, the vice chancellor of Baraton was Professor Mutuku Mutinga. Mm. And he calls me and says they want to help me. They were led by Dr. Jordan. Dr. Jordan was a Mzungu who my brother used to work for him as a gardener. You know, he was a student and working for Dr. Jordan too. As a gardener? Yes, as a gardener. You okay. know, in Baraton, there's a lot of work, school programs. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can do a lot of jobs. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Jordan coordinated me with uh, the administration of the university. And you know, when the results came, the KCSC results, they registered me there for free. Wow, at Baraton University? At Uber. Baraton University. Uh -huh. I registered to do accounting. And very shortly after, my brother's friend went to the U.S., follow okay. me, right yeah i'm getting you yeah so my brother's friend uh also theology student pastor kosge he goes to the u.s and he's like i really want to help you you know your brother was a good person i really want to help you so he sends me application forms to go to wachita hills college in arkansas and then i fill the application forms and i get admission and i go to the u.s embassy for interview and that's how I left Kenya. Wow. When was this? Uh, this was 2005. 2005? Yes. So you left Kenya in 2005? I left Kenya in 2005. Uh-huh. Yes. To go to? To go to the U.S. on a student visa. A student visa? Yes. Wow. Yes. This show is moving very, very fast. I can't keep up. <laughs> I can't keep up. I need to bring myself and compose myself again yeah. before we get back to this let me give a few shout outs to a few people who've already tuned in this beautiful afternoon and watching jalas tv make sure that you, you tell everybody that 
Masi Atis is live on Bonga na Jalas. Let me just check. Kevin Wakili Fitness anasema Kenya to the world anytime. Priska Udura anasema Jalas. Uh, unamshika akinyi na hehehe jamani Abu Bakar Kikoech anasema uh, Ruto anakuja lini ehe uh, boss confirmed yesterday Mugedi Ana anasema ndani Bethwell Kiprono anasema 2005 wow prime news Kenya 500 strong yes we want to push it all the way to to 4000 artificial intelligence the lady is story is so inspiring and we're just starting Morris Anasema letter Sasaraha, Miriam Gang, Anasema we are locked, Flozi Rugi, Anasema we are in here, Eric Mutuko, I see you, Remy Ambani, Anasema watching from Dubai, thank you so much, uh, Eric Mutuko, thank you so much, I can see you, it's Trisha Baby, Anasema such an inspiration, uh, she is so beautiful, Anasema Ivo Nani, who you, Pauline, eh, hey, Pauline, thank you, beauty. thank you, Pauline, which alone feel that Anasema, uh, Oh, way. Now it's too fast. It's moving so fast. Ibrahim Unyango, I see you, Danny. Bobby Mike, thank you so much. Sandra, tell everybody that we are live. Mwari Kinyanjui, Anasema, we are locked in. Thank you so much. I see Sprenda Kepres, Anasema, we are in. Anne Kimani tuned in. Vera Lisambe, she's doing so good. Anasema, I'm like you. Vanessa Mwangi, Anasema, I'm your fan and I love you so much. Kelvin Yachwai, Anasema, great soul you are. Let's have a good time. And uh, Duncan Chennai and Sema, you are glowing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Muchami tunakonea mbali. Yo glowe unayonea wapi. Tunakujua. Chairman, Timafizi. So, you land in the US. Yes, I land in the US. In 2005. In 2005, May. Who are you going to see? Who are you going to meet? Or when you land, mm -hmm. who is waiting for you? Did you land at JKF? Uh, JFK? No, I landed at Houston, mm -hmm. Houston International Airport. All right. And there I was delayed because the main school I was going to was in Silver Spring, Maryland. Mm. And yet I was going to Arkansas. So my flight is delayed and the people who came to pick me up at the airport, they wait until they are gone. So when I get to the airport, I'm confused. There's nobody to pick me up. I don't know what to do. I'm just looking lost. I'm also shocked by the dressing. You know, it was summertime. So I see everybody wearing shorts and uh, tank tops. So I'm like, oh my God, these people, they're walking naked. That was the very sh first shock. So there's a, an African-American woman who comes to me and uh, she's really nice. She's sweet and she's like, uh, hi, honey, how are you, sweetheart? Are you okay? She works at the airport. And uh, she asked me, where are you going to? And I said, I'm going to school. You are from Africa? She really embraced me the way I hugged you when I got in. <laughs> <laughs> and so she goes through my papers until she finds the phone number, calls the school. And eventually, uh, they come to pick me up okay. in a white van. Mm. So we are going to Arkansas. You know, I had imagined America is like Nairobi or New York City, you know, like mm. big. But Arkansas is like the village, like Kabura village where I was born. Mm. So we are leaving the Tama Road and we are getting in the Maram Road. And I'm like, ah, Maram Road in America? Yeah! Jesus. Imagine, yeah! <laughs> 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 and I said to them, these people are going to kill me, oh. <laughs> So, okay. yeah, so I get to the place, to the school, and um, just so many, so many culture shock the last. I'd never seen a bathtub before, so they got me there to take a shower, and I remember just seeing a white bed. <laughs> so how can I shower in a bed? I was so mshamba. <laughs> and I stayed in the bathroom that day for over one hour. I didn't know how to turn on the water. And eventually a white lady comes, hi, okay, we can all be turn on the water. <laughs> <laughs> the water is cold. The water. Yeah. I had tried to turn it around, to push it, to beat the water. It was not coming out, but you had to pull it. <laughs> so one hour you are not showered. I'm not showered. But you are naked. I'm naked. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day the, the next shock is the food you know it was a vegetarian 
So there's no milk, there's no eggs, there's no meat, there's no garlic, there's no manna, there's nothing there's that no I've gege, ever there's seen. No butter, there's, there's no gege, there's no butter, there's no obambo, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to look at the food and cry. I just look at the food and there's nothing that I can recognize and I turn around and I start crying. And that is where the, the, the culture shock started sinking a little bit. And then I just had no option but to get used to the food. And when I got used to it, I used to eat like crazy now. <laughs> you loved it? I loved it. <laughs> oh, you loved it now? Yeah. yeah. And I was eating all this tofu and uh, granola, granola cereal in the morning. And then we leave the school and we go to live in a church. Now we are leaving Arkansas to Kansas, which is Kansas. Yeah? So we're going to live inside a church. Wow. Yeah. And then every day we have a bag, you carry the bag, you go knock door to door and you, you have a script that you memorize. And then we have to sell these books door to door, door to door. So uh, we had like uh, the desire of ages, the great controversy, all these books by Ellen G. White, plus many other, so, uh, many other books. And these are the things that you are selling? Yes, we were selling these books door to door. And we did that the whole summertime. Remember, I went in May? In May, yeah. So the whole summertime until, say, September. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking we are going to school. And then we go back to the school very briefly for a few days. And those few days, they're telling us to knock door to door and ask people who want Bible study. And then a few days later, we are going to another state, to Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee? Yes, to go sell books again there. So there is no school, and I'm like, what? Ah, you know, I can't say that. <laughs> That's it, we are on YouTube. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? What the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I really want to go to school. Oh, my nigga. My nigga. Sanitize. I go, what the? <laughs> Mother, father. <laughs> Mother Fanta, Mother Fama, yeah. you called me right in here to be selling books. You didn't tell me that. I thought yeah, I was going to be a student. Yeah, I thought I was going to be a student. But they know you're selling books? Yeah, I'm selling books and then after after summer I have to sell books again and then Whoa. after winter I have to sell books again. So you're again. a saleswoman? I'm a saleswoman. Not a, not a student no more? <laughs> no, just a saleswoman. Mm. Until I meet uh, one missionary lady, mm. I'm trying to sell books to her and she's like, your accent sounds familiar, where are you from? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm from Kenya. She's like, oh my god, oh my god. She's holding my hand, can I hold your hand? Oh my god, oh my god. And then she's, honey, honey, she's running to her husband. This young lady is from Kenya, this young lady is from Kenya, oh my god, oh my god. And the husband is like, what? From Kenya? Kenya? Yes. <laughs> we are missionaries in Kenya. These two white people, yeah? The white couple. And so uh, they, they, they're like, what are you doing in Arkansas? Of all the places, you know, people who come uh, to the U.S., nobody goes to Arkansas. Because uh, it's in the village. <laughs> yeah, it's all white people. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only black woman. You know, uh, at one point, I worked at uh, Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. Mm. And everybody used to, they want my line. You know, I was a cashier at one point, and all the Arkansas people, they're looking at me like, ah, there's a black cashier, you know. And they're coming to me, oh my God, you're from Africa? Did you live on top of trees? Did you live yeah. with the lions? Yeah, did the lions not eat you? Is the last your boyfriend? <laughs> They're like, how did you survive? How did you survive? Oh my shit. God, did the snakes not bite you? You know. And so the manager comes, the manager at Walmart comes okay. and be like, okay, some people go to this line. No, no, everybody wants my line because there's no like dark skinned black people like me. Oh. Yeah, they're looking at me like, oh, oh my God, oh. she's from Africa. So my, I used to do cashier until my hands are tired. And the manager's like, please go to the other line. Everybody just wants your line. So that's how Arkansas is anyway. Uh, where was I? <laughs> you were at this home where this, this... Yeah, the white couple. Mm. So they say, let's go eat pizza. And you know, in the village in Kabura, we don't have pizza. Hey, so no, I've no, never no. seen you pizza. Have, you have chapati, put uh, skuma on top and meat and, and call it pizza. And kuku kienyeji. Kuku kienyeji and stuff. So yeah. you get pizza for the first time. For the first time. And I remember that I didn't eat it. But at this time, the person who was supervising us came in. The same guy who picks me at the airport. And he came in to interrupt, you know, me and the missionaries, the Kenyan missionaries, and he's like, excuse me, but uh, she needs to go. You can't, uh, you can't be talking to her like this. And the missionary is like, uh, excuse us. 
uh, we have to talk to her. We are missionaries in Kenya. She can't go. You have to wait. And so Eugene, his name was Eugene Prewitt. He goes and then after five minutes, he comes back. He was so nervous, you know. All right. The guy at the school. And eventually, uh, these people say, you are not okay. Tell us the truth. What is going on? You know, the, the white couple. What is going on? Tell us. And I'm like, I came here to go to school and I'm not going to school. And they're like, no way. We have to come and steal you at night. So they came in the middle of the night and they stole me. And that's how I left. I went to their house. So you, all right. So they, they, they showed up in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night and they showed me. And you know, Jalas, I don't know if I can say this on YouTube. Please go away. But I stayed with this couple until one day. They used to give me their laptop to use, their computer. Yeah? And <laughs> I don't know if it's okay. Go ahead. Okay. They used to give me their computer to use. And uh, one day I was using the computer and pornography popped up. Uh -huh. And I'd never seen anything like that in my life. Wow. I was like, what? What the hell? What the hell? So when you left for the for the for, for the United States, nobody had touched you before? No, I was a virgin. You were a virgin. Even I now you're a virgin of how many children? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm a virgin with two young boys. <laughs> <laughs> so I see <laughs> I told your people that shit is going to smoke out, man. I see. Mm. And I'm like, what? So I clicked on it out of curiosity. And you know, when I clicked on it, the whole laptop computer got infected with the porno virus. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> you know how the virus infects? A, po a computer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I tried to turn it off, I tried to restart, I tried to do everything that I knew. Nothing was working, I turned the computer off. When the couple came and they found just pornography all over the computer. And so they kicked me out. <laughs> they said, is this what you're doing here? Is this what you're doing? You're coming and I'm like, I'm sorry that I wasn't searching. No, 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 this is what you are, you are doing. You are, I'm like, it was like, I'm the one who initiated the pornography. But I honestly didn't know what it was. But when I saw it, I was killed as food. You still watch today? <laughs> That's a personal question. Ask me later. <laughs> <laughs> You're a member of the hub. Anyway. <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. That can chile and I said a thousand strong watching this beautiful afternoon. Thank you so much, Janet McCary. And I said my Aki Thank you so much. Bella Bella is is just laughing. Kingsley and I said my root of a president. Lavenda Amunga Terrors tuned in. I don't wanna know. Kevin okay, focus the last. Dan can chene and I say my strong, strong one thousand. Morrison Adoy and I say my I don't give a da, 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 da. <laughs> black hotters and I say my such a bold woman and a great smile you have right there. Happy soul, mercy you are. No, my son, I care for Nasema. The show is late. Sandra Nasema, her tarts are jealous. The team brand is Anna. She's so funny. I don't give a damn on a seminar. Let's watch all the hub we can. Andrew Washington Nasema, Nico Dani. I see hey, Esther Adoyo. Wow. I just love this girl for free. Yes, the man on a seminar here. SDA. SD doesn't mean boring. <laughs> wow, Jalas, I'm crushing on you daily. Hey, hey! <laughs> and she, she, she put some love heart. Did you see her? Did you see her? Have you seen her? Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Chanel what did, Chanel. What did she say? That is a kale, yeah. Mm, what did she say? Jalas, I am crushing on you daily. Love, 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 love. Am I her? You are jealous. I'm her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, until you said it, that's when I realized I'm her. So you are kicked out. I'm kicked out. To where? To nowhere. <laughs> so where did you go? I had a phone number of another lady from the church, the same church. Uh -huh. And so she took me in, and I was her nanny, and I was going to school. You know, they raised for me $1,200, mm. and they registered me in Northwest Arkansas Community mm. College. 
So uh, from this lady, there are no buses in Arkansas. There are no trains in Arkansas. Everybody has a private car. I didn't have a car. So I just um, had to sometimes cycle a bike to school. Uh, you know, the weather there can be really bad, the winter. Mm. And eventually I met another lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You be meeting people? In school, inside the school. Uh -huh. This is a little lady who went to the U.S. when she was, say, like uh, a toddler, like my son's age. Wow. So she's a little, but she doesn't really know. But she heard I'm from Kenya and she said, come live with me. So huh? that's how you moved to live with her? I lived to, to live with, with her. Hey, but I can't even tell you what I saw there. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. Yeah, why don't you want to tell us what did you see in this little woman's house? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is too much, Jalan. Talk to me. Ah! I told you this is the biggest platform you can ever have. This little lady used to bring a lot of men to her house. Whoa. And they would just like F her there every day in front of me. In front of you? Yeah. It was so uncomfortable. I was what like, you had watched <laughs> on TV was now live. <laughs> it was now live. Live right before my eyes. Wow. It was so uncomfortable. Oh my Did God. they ever touch you? No, they didn't. Uh -huh. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't. But she was just a party girl, you know, just having today. Having a good time. Yeah, just having a good time. Mm -hmm. Enjoying her youth. <laughs> mm, she was uh, young that time. Yeah, she was very How young. How old were you at that time? 21 now? No, I was like maybe 19, 19, 19. still, yeah. Yeah. Less than 20. Wow. And you were living and with this girl who was... Yeah, and then I also met a white boyfriend. So, so, so you, you had a white boyfriend? Yeah! Oh, <laughs> so, so, whoa. So, so, oh my God. Yeah, he was so cute. Oh my God, and I really thought he was going to marry me. <laughs> Sanitize again, man. So, he didn't marry you. I really thought he was going to marry me, Jalas. But he was so cool. Hey, what is and his name, though? Uh, Derek. Derek? Yes. Wow. And so, he was your first boyfriend? Yeah. And he's the one you lost everything to? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> he was so white, and I'm so black. Wow, if that you guys gave birth, it would be a zebra. <laughs> Black, white, black. White. But he yeah, really, really showed me the US, uh -huh. their food, their, uh -huh. their uh, celebrations, celebration. their culture. Mm. He used to own like a truck. So mm. we would drive around and he would just teach me so many things McDonald's, mm -hmm. you know. He used to go to the gym and eat like <laughs> many big hamburgers. So, hamburgers. So, 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 so he's the guy who taught you a lot. Yeah, he's the guy who taught me a lot. Tell us about the first day, man. Oh, my what goodness. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, he was living in the same nini, in the same neighborhood. All right. Yeah, in the same, like, uh, the same apartment. Mm. Yeah. And I think uh, one day I wanted to go to college, and I'm the one who asked him about um, a ride. Hi, excuse me, can I get a ride? <laughs> and he gave me a ride to, to the college. Yeah, and he just really liked me. But you know what's amazing? Mm. He was related to the Walmarts. Wow. Yeah, he was related. So they were really rich people. But um, it was a good time. It was a good time? Yeah, really, really so good. So we don't go to a lot of details? We don't go to too many details. Some things, you know, you have to keep, you know, you can't tell all the secrets you now. Anything. Yeah, so just you fill with your head. white man. Imagine. He did. <laughs> I'm a Zongo. I'm a Zongo. <laughs> As I told you, this is going to be a big one. Eh? All right. Now, 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 you are living with this girl, mm -hmm. this college girl. Mm -hmm. She's bringing all these men to the house. Yeah. Uh, it is disturbing you. Yeah. You're wondering how are things going to work. Right. How did, how did, how did you work that out? Or how did I get it out? <laughs> one day it was winter time, and you know when it's winter time, it's it is winter. snowing it's and snowing. it's cold. And yes. So one day I'm walking. And I can imagine where you are in the village. It's crazy. Eh? Yeah. Mm. So it's really cold, and I'm walking by myself. I'm going to school, and this nice lady named Peggy, she's like, "Excuse me, why are you walking in the snow?" And I'm like, "I'm going to school. Come on, get in." So she, I get in her. She had this V8 
another really rich lady and she's driving me to college and she's like what's going what's wrong why are you walking in the snow i don't want to see you like this i can give you rides whenever you want to go to school and one day she invited me to her house come meet my husband and i went to meet her husband when i went to meet her husband <coughs> they said we have a surprise for you and they said um we don't have a child you know there are a couple that have lived together they love each other but they have no child and they say we want to adopt you to be our child so they take me to a bedroom to up to to a <laughs> <laughs> where somebody can pick me in the <laughs> and surprise me with adoption <laughs> But it's like I'm already 18 so the thing will be complicated it would be easier if I was under 18 okay so they take me to their bedroom upstairs and it's pink you know like people who have wanted a girl child forever mm -hmm. it's pink like the bed is pink pink slippers pink carpet it's beautiful wow and they said this is going to be your new house oh. yeah this is going to be your new home this is your bedroom so Peggy really loved me, like she loved me, she loved me so much the last, she loved me with all her heart. But there was only one problem now. They couldn't allow me to work or hustle. You know when you go to the US, you have a family in Kenya, you want to support your family, you want to send something, I want to pay school fees. At this time my mother is dead, I want to pay school fees for my younger sister. And this couple, they love you, they give you everything. But they want me to be a baby. Did can you, you be a baby? No, I can't be a baby. <laughs> I have never. So I can't be a baby anymore. So, so, I, so, I tried so the question them. is, yeah. the question is, yeah. did you ever tell them about your situation back at home? Yes, and they said, let God take care of them, you know. We'll take care of you. I told them, but my family, they need, they were like, no, you can't get a job, you can't, you will just go to school, you will be our child. You know, Jalas, here in Africa, you are a man, right? I know you are supporting maybe, I don't know how many relatives. Mm -hmm. But in the U.S., most people, they support only their families. Yes. Yeah. If, for example, you are marrying a Mzungu and the Mzungu knows you are a single lady, you can't say help this one, help this one, help mm. this one, help mm. this one. So they don't have that. It's a cultural difference. Mm. Yeah. So this couple, they were willing to give me everything. But not your family. But not my family. So I was in a bad situation because I was like, now what happens to? Your family. To my family. Mm. And I, I said, I really want to work. They didn't want me to know how to drive. But they really loved me. I don't know if this is why I ended up with bad luck, but I left their house without, you know, not Say in a bad. good, yeah. So just one day you just woke up? I just said, no, no, I want to go hustle. Mm -hmm. So I left their house and I'm told later that the lady was really heartbroken. She really loved me and she really wanted me to be her child. But I went home and I, I went out and I, I got a job. I had studied now the nursing thing. So I started working in a nursing home. So I left the lady really heartbroken. Did you ever take her phone number? <laughs> you want to want her to adopt you too or what? No, no. no. <laughs> <Just> kidding. <laughs> they adopt babies, they don't adopt what they say. I am Miss Aja now. <laughs> Actually, the one who is adopting people now. <laughs> <laughs> like I have a son called Nakoche, you know. Oh. Yeah, Nakoche is my son. Wow. Uh, wow. You adopted him? Yes, yeah, I adopted him. Wow. Uh, Congratulations. Big, big boy, but trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Nakoche. <laughs> ah, right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. So, 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 so you went and studied nursing now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I became certified, certified mm -hmm. nursing assistant. It's called CNA. CNA. Yes. So I started working and um, I was making good money. They pay per hour. So they pay like um, minimum is uh, maybe $10 per hour, uh -huh. which is 1,000 1, shillings 1, per hour. Mm -hmm. And you work for eight hours and after eight hours is overtime. So they pay time and a half. Mm -hmm. So that is $15 per hour after mm -hmm. eight hours. Mm -hmm. And if it's holiday or if it's a weekend, you get paid double. Mm -hmm. So if you're working on a Sunday, you get paid $20 per hour. Mm -hmm. So it's really good money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you're making around like 10000 per day? 
Yeah. 10,000, sometimes 12,000. Around, yeah, yeah, around per day. Per day? Yes. Aye. Yeah. Okay. So I was helping my family, but the one problem I didn't invest, I was supposed to buy land, you know, at home. Mm. So if you are watching and you are overseas, buy land at home, you know. There's a time my sister suggested me, there is some land, you know, you geese, they're selling for 40,000, but I just ignored. So this is one of my regrets. Wow. Yeah. So you regret not investing back at home? I regret not investing back at home. I thought I would live in the, in the America, uh, US forever. Mm. I really never thought I would come back home. Wow. How did you guys break up with Derek? Oh, we didn't really break up. I relocated. Oh, when you left uh, this yeah. uh, home? When I left, uh, yeah, mm. the Arkansas. I left home. the state. Oh, Derek must have been very disappointed. Yeah, but he was also planning to go to Europe. I don't know. You know these white rich kids. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but he was really my size. <laughs> I miss him sometimes. What's your size? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Did he just baby me? Give me a high five. So this, uh, from the nursing home? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I bought a, a, a car, Dodge Neon, white mm. in mm. color. You, you, you got yourself a Dodge? Yeah, Dodge Neon. Dodge Neon? Yeah, beautiful car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had a house, a place you were living alone now? I was renting now, mm -hmm. a small place. Mm. And then um, one day I just woke up and I said, I don't want to live in Arkansas no more. You know, I want to go to Dallas, Texas. Somebody told me that there are so many Kenyans in Dallas. And you know, in Arkansas, now you long for Kenyans. Because you're the only black person there. Yeah, almost still is. Yeah. So I was like, I want to meet many Kenyans. So mm. let me move to Dallas, Texas. So I moved to Dallas. Mm, I even remember I used to live on Skillman Street. That is the street where J.F. Kennedy was killed. Wow. Yeah. J.F. Kennedy. Yes. Mm. So I lived on Skillman Street. I, I lived uh, there in uh, what you call a bed sitter, but a studio. Mm -hmm, a studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I lived in a studio for $350 a month. $350, see, okay, pay $100. 35K, yeah, that's not bad, right? Mm -hmm. That's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to church in Arlington, mm -hmm. All Nations SDA Church. Uh -huh. Yeah. And, uh, so you met so many Kenyans here? Yeah. yeah, so many Kenyans. And by the way, I want to go to Steve Aseno. Mm -hmm. I met him at All Nations and he's in Nairobi right now. He's probably Asen. watching. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I met there Steve Aseno and many other uh, Kenyans there. Many other Kenyans there. Mm -hmm. And I was working three jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One? Uh, nursing home, nursing home, and I was working for a mobile company called Boost Mobile. The Boost Mobile? Yeah, Boost mm -hmm. Mobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know them, I have their line. Oh, you do? My dreams. <laughs> no, <laughs> so you're doing three jobs. Yeah. Nursing, nursing and boost. Yeah. Um. And there, if you do three jobs, you know you get so tired because you barely have time to sleep. Mm. And if you sleep at work, they get you fired. But if you get fired here, you get job the next door. Hey. So that's the difference between America and Kenya. There are so many jobs, and especially the nursing jobs. Mm. If you are certified, you know, it's very easy to get them because mm -hmm. nobody wants to do them. Wow. Yeah. So sometimes I got fired and then I got job the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so you are fired? One day, yeah. A, a job get it. Let me tell you one day why I got fired. Oh. Like, why were you fired? <laughs> you know, there, uh, when you are working as a certified nursing assistant, they have halls, yeah? Mm -hmm. Hallways, hallways. So you are assigned to hallway A or B or C or D. So one day, uh, I'm assigned say, to hall A. And these jobs we do, you brush this. Sometimes the old people teeth, you clean their poo poo, you change their diapers, you do all those. I'm not going. <laughs> I wanted to go, but now I'm okay back. <laughs> oh. And one day, I'm assigned to hall A, and somebody has done a really like, somebody has really messed up in hall C, and they're calling me from hall A to go. Hall C. Eh, uh, mindo ni mpanguze mafi Hall C. 
Yes. And I was like, no way. No, I was assigning all her. Hey, hey, why are you calling me there? But that is if the... somebody has done his <laughs> own hole. See, see, let him clean the whole scene. Yeah, let the person assigned there do that job. Yay! And I was like, Everybody no way. Can do that yeah, and the manager right? said, you are going to do it. And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> then they said, you're fired. You're fired. And I said, okay, bye. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Just like that, and I got a job the next door. <laughs> <laughs> they said if they chase because of a whole A come to all D in uh, this other place. Yeah, there's another job right next door. So yeah. So you're fired here and you're working here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> ah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you are in Texas. I'm in Texas. But I still have these dreams to be you know, Hollywood. You know Hollywood, right? No, I don't know. Oh, yeah, the Lupita I Nyongo. Now I just see about Hollywood. I've never been there before. Uh, no, never been to Hollywood. No. Okay, yeah. Hollywood is now, yeah, you know. Where you dream of. The entertainment. You industry. had this whole dream about being an actress or something? Actress, singing, modeling, all that. You see? <laughs> I've just watched a video here. <laughs> <laughs> I love singing, Jalad. I love singing, yeah? Yes. All yeah. right, tell us about your life in Dallas and this big dream about getting yourself to Hollywood. So, uh, I'm in Dallas, I'm working as a nurse, but something is still missing. Um, I want to be a star. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to be a star. I want to be in the big screens. I want to know all that. So, I went first to New Jersey. I stayed with a lady named Monica Songok. By the way, she saw my YouTube video uh, on Tuko, and she contacted me. So, yeah. I stayed with Monica Songok for a while and I left there because it was just too cold. New York, New Jersey, New York. Mm. Too cold. Because of the word new. New yeah. weather, new yeah. everything. Yeah. Mm. So I moved to Los Angeles and in Los Angeles is where everything fell apart. Everything fell apart in Los Angeles. In LA. In LA. Wow, I thought that LA is the home of big dreams. <laughs> the of fame, the world, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you go to Hollywood, you see all those stars drawn mm, on the ground. That's in LA. Yeah, in LA. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. There are so many stories in LA, but I ended up homeless in LA. You know, I saw one comment on my YouTube. How are you homeless and you have a car? Yeah, many homeless people live in their cars in America. So you can be homeless and have a car. <laughs> So I ended up homeless, and by so the way, so 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 you are not homeless. <laughs> so you are car careful. <laughs> you are careful because you're living in your car then. <laughs> yeah, but where can you shower? Can you shower in the car? No. Can you cook in the car? No. Yeah. So you ended up in the homeless community. Yeah, I have so many people in LA. Like, oh, my life got really so many people I took advantage of me. Mm. Yeah. So many people, sometimes, you know, they have a website called Craigslist, yeah, mm -hmm. craigslist.org. And in this website, you can always post that you're looking for a job or looking for a house or looking for a date or looking for whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I would post there and like, uh, I'm looking for a place to stay, blah, blah, blah. And, and a guy says, that I want to um, host, you. host you and you go and they rape you and then they throw you out. So that happens so many times to you, to me. Wow, I'm sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that happened so many times. Like, I, I really got used a lot in LA. LA is crazy. LA is crazy, yeah. To any girl who is in America or is planning to, uh, to go to America and they find themselves in, in LA, what is yeah. this one advice you tell them? Well, I go to LA at least if you have somebody there, you know. I went there and I didn't know anybody in LA. So at least go there if you have somebody and um, and and if if you have you know strong source of income you know there are many people live with roommates. Mm -hmm. I even, you even have guy roommates and by the way, just last <laughs> one day I, I was looking for a roommate and I found this guy and he had a snake as a pet. I screamed. I almost fell down. <laughs> These white people now, white people. So yeah. So I would advise um, a young lady who is going to LA. Oh, 
other states are better is is cheaper i told you in dallas i was renting a bed sitter for 350 350 us mm -hmm. dollars mm -hmm. now in la the minimum you can find maybe is 800 us dollars for a bed sitter which is 80000 ya kenya wow yeah so anyway, I continue so there working. There are so many Kenyans who are going through a very hard time in America. And so many Kenyans are homeless in America. So many Kenyans? Yes, they are on drugs, they are homeless, they terrible. It's crazy. Especially close, close to Los Angeles Airport. Mm. Yeah, you see Kenyans, they are smoking weed like, ah, i in Kenya. Na Completely gone. Yeah. And piga like gone. Bugde. Yeah, gone. This body like Yeah, if you have a family in the US and they are not communicating, just know that wakuma mashashola. Or maybe by. something is not okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe something. And so many Kenyans are also in jails and prisons. Kenyans. Haya. Even my cousin did not release them. <laughs> Barack Obama. Mm. Okay, now this is the most amazing experience that I had. I actually volunteered for Barack Obama campaign mm. for a long yeah, you know, during the whole campaign. I would go to a call center, you know, they had a call center at the TV station, say at KTN, and you would call people, Hi, I'm calling you from Barack Obama campaign, can you come and vote? I also vol volunteered at his fundraisings, I would uh, write the names of the people at the door. So when I got arrested, I really thought Obama would rescue me, honestly. <laughs> I even wrote a song for Obama. It's on YouTube. Did you see it? You wrote a song? For Obama to yeah, come and rescue me. <laughs> give, give, give it to me, Kidogo. <clears throat> <clears throat> Incarceration in America is just too much. It is irrelevant. Barack Obama, you're the president of America. You have the power before you leave the White House. Do something, do something, do something. <laughs> About incarceration in America. Millions of people are crying. Millions. Millions of families are broken. Millions of children are hurting. Who will help us? Who will rescue us? Who will save us? <laughs> That's a song for Barack Obama. And it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. <laughs> What's your YouTube name? My YouTube name is Marcia Tis. Many people say Otis, but it's a T. It's a Tis. Yeah. A Tis for a Tiano. Yeah. <laughs> So many people are laughing, huh? <laughs> You're crazy, man. <laughs> you do your last. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm crazy, just a little bit. <laughs> wow. So you are here in Texas. I'm in California in now. In California now. Yeah, and I'm homeless. And you're homeless. Yeah. Wow. At what point did you get arrested? How did this go? And how did you end up in the American prison? So I'm trying to get my life together and I decide to go and live in a homeless shelter. Yeah? So I, live, I go and live in a whole homeless shelter. Mm, why couldn't you just go look for a job and you're a certified nurse assistant? I went to look for a job. Uh, I went to look for a job as another... I went to Universal Studios Hollywood. Universal Studio. Yes, I got a job at Universal Studio. The makers Studios. of Commando. Yes, the makers of movies and all that. So you remember my dream. Now why are you telling me to keep on uh, panguzaning people's poops? <laughs> and you want to be a superstar? I want to be a star. So you're in California. I'm in California and I'm living in a shelter and I'm doing audience work. Um, what is audience work? Audience work is like, you see like Churchill Show? Mm. And the audience there, they get paid mm. to be in the show. Uh -huh. Yeah. So let's say the last live goes on. Yes. The audience in there are just... They are paid per hour. People, people, why are you even here? <laughs> Go to America, sit down, enjoy a show, get, get paid. Get paid, yeah. So I work for Ja Judy, I work for Ja Joe Brown, I work for America's Got Talent, I work for many, many TV shows. So you just used to sit in there? Yeah, but even for you to get there... They pick white people first, go in. Mexicans go in. Asians go in. Light-skinned black people go in. Now if there's space, then the dark That's people. That's when you, yeah. <laughs> How many times did they reject you? 
oh so many times but i never gave up you know mm-hmm. yeah did it get to a point where now you just used to go in and, and no yeah. no every time they always choose in that criteria white people go in first hispanics asians light skin black people and we always uh, remain if you look at everybody remaining in the line they are dark like you but i didn't take it serious you know i didn't take it serious until i got arrested arrested yeah what were you arrested for i i i lit a rag on fire a carpet you did what i i lit a rag on fire so so a rag is a carpet yeah rag is a carpet so you literally put it up on fire or something <laughs> i lit like a matchbox on the carpet yeah why would you do that <laughs> out of rest even in kenya man. <laughs> Not just in the US. Why would you do that? <laughs> okay, Jalas. I know some people have seen this on uh, the other interview, but uh, my dad passed on. You know, my dad passed away in Kenya. And, and you're in the States? I was time. in the States. So I couldn't come to his funeral. And I asked my family to video for me the funeral. And they did, and um, <coughs> they sent it to the shelter. So when the staff at the shelter received it, they decided to open it and start watching it. So I remember even that day I was coming from Barack Obama. Uh, he okay. had just become president. I was coming from one well, of his events. Now. Nine now. Now, nine. Yeah. I was coming from one of his events. And I was so happy in high spirits. And getting in the shelter, I find my mail in the inbox, but it's opened. So um, I know definitely this is, you know, it's from home. So this is definitely my father's. And when you go to my room, you have to pass by the staff room. The computer is facing this side. And I see them watching my dad's funeral on the computer. And first the shock. But what annoyed me jealous was they started laughing at me. Maybe it was funny how they were burying my dad with soil. I don't know what was so funny about the video. But they started laughing and then they shut the door to my face. And you can see there was a surveillance video that caught the crime. You can see me first knocking politely, excuse me, excuse me, why are you opening my mail? Excuse me, give me my mail. Why are you watching my father's funeral? Excuse me. And they kept laughing so loud. Anybody living in the U.S. can relate to this. And so that loud laughter is what made me go crazy. And I can say that it was temporary insanity. I went out of my mind. Because I was like, how oh, first why are you opening my mail? You're shutting the door and then you're laughing. What is so funny? So um, at that point, uh, I went out of my mind. I was screaming, no, 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 open the door, open the door, open the door, and do this to me. I was crying and I, I had a charcoal lighter food. I used to hustle at night, I would sell hot dogs. So I lit the thing on the carpet to get their attention, to get out and give me my mail. I honestly lit the rug on fire to get their attention, not to kill people. I don't know how you are going to judge this, but um, as soon as I lit the thing, they smelled it and they came out and the fire was turned off with a hooded sweatshirt. Can you use a sweatshirt to turn off a fire? No, I'm just saying it was not anything that blew up, that hurt anybody. So I remember just the police coming and um, arresting me. I don't even know what I was. Like I was out of my mind. And they're taking me to jail and they're telling me like, uh, your bail is $250,000. Hey, 2.5 million Kenya shillings. Obviously, I couldn't raise that amount. So I tried to cry, I tried to scream, I tried to kick and shout, no, get me out of here! <laughs> Nobody was listening. Nobody was getting me out of there. And then I went to court the first time and I had them reading, adding more charges in court. And they're like, uh, she threatened to kill us. And jealous, honestly, honestly. You know, my oldest sister, has my court papers. They are in the village there in Rangala. And I want to bring them to you one day if you will invite me again to show you. I have all the court transcripts 
from America. They are in a big box. And so I was wondering, if I really said I'm going to kill you, why did you not put it in the police report? Because after the incident, the police came and took a report. The fire department took a report. I don't know the, which department. There were like five reports that were taken after the incident. And there is nowhere in the report where these people say, I will kill you. If somebody says they will kill you, you are going to say the police. Even when they were calling, there was a recorded um, 911 call. And the, the, the 911 call is asking, what is she saying? She's not saying anything. She's just crying and, and acting crazy and lighting a fire. What is she saying? They could have said, she's saying she will kill me, but they did not say that. So they added two false charges. And I honestly want the American embassy, I want to sue these people. Because I honestly didn't say I'm going to kill these people. If the American embassy is anybody is watching right now, I need to get paid. So they added these two false charges and the, the, the charges stuck. And I, I was imprisoned for five years when I was only supposed to serve six months in jail. Um, it hurts a lot because Ason means uh, willfully and maliciously causing a fire with intention to kill people. Without intention to kill people, it becomes a lower crime called a misdemeanor. So without the intention to kill, but now they, they, um, they got me with three felonies. Two felonies, I'm innocent. And without these two felonies, the other felony becomes a misdemeanor. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so honestly, if I find a lawyer anywhere to take up on this case, American people need to pay me for this. Because they put me through so much suffering that was unnecessary. So you were in prison for how long? So I went, to, um, I went through the whole jail for 18 months. And this is something that Tuko edited out. And I want to say very clearly, the Kenya embassy kept ignoring my calls. I would call the Kenya embassy and call the Kenya embassy and call the Kenya embassy. And they would be like, call back tomorrow. Call in the afternoon. Call on Thursday. Call us on Friday. Eventually, I wrote a letter to Honorable Raila Odinga, the Prime Minister of Kenya. I told him my whole story. I wrote like a 10-page letter to the Prime Minister. And I said my whole story, and he received the letter. I just addressed Honorable Raila Odinga, um, uh, Prime Minister of Kenya, Parliament Building, and he got the letter. And he read it, and the letter actually touched him. And he called his sister, the ambassador, then Akinyi Wenwa Odinga. And Akinyi came to visit me in jail. Um, she asked me, what can I do to help you, Miss Masi? And I said, uh, thank you for coming to visit me. What you can do, there are many things you can do. The first thing you can do, please get me a good lawyer. Get me a lawyer that will represent me. The one that I have is for the American government, and he's just trying to convict me. And I said, the second thing you can do is bring Kenyans to court to show solidarity of my case. The other thing you can do is visit me in jail, put some money on my books to buy hygiene and other necessary stuff. So she did all that. Good for her. And then on the next day that I was going to court, even Akini told me that I talked to the lawyer who is representing you, and this lawyer is not trying to help you. These are words from Akini's mouth. He is not even from Ghana, he's African-American, and he's not trying to help you. So I'm going to get you a lawyer. So that day, the last, I went to court knowing the Kenyan people are going to take over my case. And by there, Kenya told me that she, she had never heard of my case before. Honorable Raila called her. So the day that the Akini lawyer was supposed to take over my case is the day that the lawyer I had, the American lawyer, declared me mentally incompetent to stand trial. So that day, I remember going inside court and they didn't read my case. They always said, this is the case of the people versus Marcelino Nyango. The defendant is present. And that day I just went in court and they said, this defendant has been declared incompetent to stand trial. This case is postponed for 90 days. There was no chance for the lawyer to take over the case. There was no chance for nothing. So when they declared me incompetent, that means I'm crazy. I'm out of my mind. I started screaming loud. Ile kialego ile. Why? Why? This is not fair! Why? I was 
crying, I was screaming, I was going crazy. But the more I was screaming, the more I was confirming that I'm actually crazy. <laughs> so what? <laughs> what? Yeah, these people they play with your head. They mess up. Even the police officers were feeling sorry for me. The police officers were like, they are not treating you right. A judge cannot declare you incompetent. Only a doctor can say you are incompetent. That's true. They are violating your rights. And I was just screaming and screaming and I was screaming and they were dragging me out of the court and there were many Kenyans in court on that day. They were dragging me out of court and I was just screaming out of like my voice. And then the lawyer took advantage and told the lawyer who was supposed to take over, you see, you see, you see what I'm telling you? She's crazy. She's crazy. You see? Um, so they convinced Akini that I'm crazy. And they convinced the Kenya people that I'm crazy. And they convinced the lawyer was supposed to take over my case that I'm crazy. So that's how they washed their hands and they left me in the hands of nothing. Yani no way I let no no. So I was just me and my God in court. And I cried so many times. Now there was nobody to call, there was nobody to visit, there was nobody to I wasn't even calling the embassy anymore. Because I'm crazy. <laughs> And you're still crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still crazy, yeah? Wow. Yeah, so they just dance me this. If you come this month, come next month. If you come next month, they even violated because in the US, unless you kill somebody, it's supposed to take a maximum of 12 months before trial. But my case took 18 months and I didn't kill anybody. So even that was a rights violation there. So after... Um, 18 months, they said I was having a trial, and I, I'm not supposed to talk. They said, if you try to say anything during this trial, we will get the maximum sentence of eight years. You better shut up. So I shut up like a boozy, and they just said whatever they wanted to say, and they found me guilty like there was no defense. Nothing was presented in my defense. No witness on my side, like just a one-sided case. They found me guilty. They sentenced me to five years. In California State Prison. I was actually in a prison called Chowchilla in California, Northern California. So, you're going to California. And before that, <laughs> now this is a funny part. You want to, you want to laugh? <laughs> we have cried. <laughs> we have cried. Now we can laugh, yeah? Let me tell you some of the things that happened in jail, yeah? Before I went to the prison. One time I was locked up for five days inside a cell. No shower, nothing. I'm just locked up. I don't know what I did. I don't remember. After five days, you know, now I'm smelling. I'm not showered. And they're getting me out at lunchtime. And they're like, Mr. Nyango, it's lunchtime. Can you go, go line up for shower? And I, I got out of my cell direct to the shower. Now I'm just taking a shower. And it's lunchtime. Get out of the shower now! Oh, those white people, yeah? The white police. Mr. Nyango, get out of the shower now! I'm just taking a shower. Out of being rude now. <laughs> I'm just taking a shower. Get out of the shower! And then eventually, the, uh, the lady came. And she took all my clothes. She took, uh, you know, everything. And I just started, she wants to rape me. She's a lesbian. <laughs> now I was... <laughs> She's a lesbian. Don't touch me. She took all my clothes. I caused such a big drama. And the prisoners, they were so happy. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, why you take my clothes? She was taking my clothes because I refused to get out of the shower. But I turned it around and I said, she's taking my clothes because she's a lesbian. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Masia tease. <laughs> That's one one funny thing, yeah. So eventually she was so scared until you know she gave me back my clothes. <laughs> I don't know and what happened. To and I dressed up, yeah. <laughs> and I got out of the shower just naked. Oh, look at this lesbian, she wants to rape me. <laughs> Telling that to the police. <laughs> But despite the challenges, you know, the prisoners always loved me a lot. 
in jail, in prison, the other inmates who are arrested for different crimes. Oh, they loved me and I loved them. We used to compose songs, make fun of the officers, just... How long were you in the prison? Prison, 85% of five years. That is around four, four years and some months or yeah, three years. Yeah. No, 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 three years, the last. Four years. Yeah, four years and some months. Almost the whole five years. In California prison now? Yeah, California State Prison. They transferred me from Chowchilla to um, CIW. Oh gosh, I have so many stories. I can take you a whole day. But from prison, I thought I was getting released now. I paid for my crime. They said, you have paid your debt to society, now you are free. What? The day I'm getting released, I'm handcuffed again. Put your hand behind your back. Handcuffs again. They're taking me to immigration jail in San Diego. So, immigration jail, they don't give you a lawyer. So I was my own lawyer. So I have to read the laws. <laughs> and I have to defend myself why I should not get deported. So I say, don't deport me because um, of f female genital mutilation. <laughs> You are using this thing to defend yourself, my lord. So 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 they said what? <laughs> and I said, yeah, if I get deported I will get sacrificed. <laughs> I told them if I get deported, I will get circumcised. <laughs> and they say, go get circumcised. <laughs> Why you eventually circumcised when you get? make somebody cry, you make somebody laugh, you <laughs> make somebody cry. At least what do you want in your What do you want to know? Mark Luetta! I don't want to know more because you laugh. I don't want to know more because you laugh. <laughs> so what happened in that prison, in that courtroom after you? That courtroom, yeah. After you said you are going to be circumcised. <laughs> they just said your defense has been denied. <laughs> you are getting Go home done. and get circumcised. <laughs> So that was it? <laughs> I went on a hunger strike. I refused to eat. <laughs> what? I refused to eat for two months. Now they were feeding me with the pipes on my nose. I was like, you need to listen to me now, you know? I've served my time. I've paid my debt. I really didn't want to get deported with nothing. I feared coming home with nothing. <laughs> like maybe many Kenyans or many Africans who are in the U.S., you want to come home when you have something, you know. At least you have a house, at least you have a business, at least you have something. Mm. So I really wanted a second chance so I can rebuild my life and come home with something. But honestly, I didn't want to come home. <laughs> totally, you just wanted to stay in America. I wanted to stay in I wanted. Not want, mm. past. Mm. Yeah. You wanted. I wanted. So I didn't want to get deported with nothing. And, and that's why I went on a hunger strike. And I was like, can somebody just listen to me? But on that hunger strike, one day the immigration, okay. Some people came, you know, the, uh, the, the, like the uh, ambulance people, the 911 people, 911 people. And there were the police officer and they said, are you going to cooperate or should we take you by force? And I said, take me by force. <laughs> so they took me by force and, and put me on a stretcher drag me down to the ambulance. I'm like, where are we going? Where are we going? Now I was also talking like the, the, them people. And nobody was answering me. So we went all the way to the ambulance and 
um, we got inside, I'm like, where are we going? And then the, somebody tells me, final destination is Kenya. Okay. So I get in this big military plane. Like, the last, am I President Obama now? No. Am I Osama Bin Laden? No. Why was I given a whole plane? <laughs> <laughs> American military airplane. A big one. <laughs> just, just, me. Just, just yourself. Just for me. <laughs> So they put you in a huge military plane? A huge military plane. To where? To Kenya. <laughs> so the plane brought you here? Yeah. And you are alone? Isn't that wasting fuel and taxpayers money? <laughs> so, so, so let me so ask in you. The plane, so uh -huh. you, are, you, you are deported in a military plane? In a military, American military plane. Yourself? Myself. And it landed here at JKL <laughs> with you one person. <laughs> Me and there was inside the plane, the immigration officers, the breathing therapist, the doctor, you know, they didn't want me to die in the plane. <laughs> so, breathing therapist. The breathing the therapist, the immigration officers, I don't know, a doctor, I don't know, a nurse, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah. All the way to Kenya. And you know what I was wearing? Mm. Hospital gown, just covering this one. And this whole back naked. Naked, jealous. From America to Kenya, naked. Matako, <laughs> what's Jesus. And so when I get to the... Imagine, it was winter. <laughs> Imagine. Oh my God, did eh. you sit in the plane though? They didn't even offer me water. How many hours of that flight? Yeah, like almost 24 hours. It's a just, long flight. And it's coming. Yeah. Just the and I was just peeping on the plane, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 I don't give up. <laughs> so I get, I get with JKA, and now they're trying to dress me in jail clothes. Jail clothes in Kenya? I said, no, 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 no fucking way. No, motherfucker, don't touch me. <laughs> don't touch me, bitch. <laughs> yeah, they ain't gonna touch you, bitch. <laughs> no fucking way. So I started screaming, no, 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 no. And then the, uh, the airplane police, the, the, the airport police, they came running in the airplane. Kenyan police now. Kenyan police in the airport. They were like, stop it, don't touch her anymore. You're in Kenyan soil now. You know how those people froze? They were like, oh. and the, the police told them, if you touch her again, you are going inside in jail. And they were so scared. I was like, what? They can be scared too. <laughs> the way in the plane, they were like, we are going to carnival. We are going to do this, 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 that. So the, well, kuna a carnival. ama waliangalia kwa Google. Who knows? Pure kabisa. Kabisa. Kwenda huko, kwenda. Awa yusiseme vibaya na panga kwenda Amerika. <laughs> Unachoma na li. <laughs> you want them to deny me a visa? Because of your chomation? You can't show me for them, man. Your chomation is going to No, you, you will get it, you will get it, don't worry. Wow. So the, 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 the Kenyan police, they call the Red Cross, the Kenya Red Cross. And I don't know why the Red Cross have not released these pictures. The Red Cross took photos of me naked the way I was deported. They came, Wali Gombanisha Wazungu. Is this how you treat Kenyans? Look at her. She has blood all over. How you treat Kenyans like this? The Red Cross, they were like, Wali Kwana Wagombanisha Wakipeleka Mbiu until the American people admitted if the situation was so bad, why did the Kenyan embassy give us travel documents? So actually, it's again the Kenyan embassy that got me deported. Because without uh, the passport, they cannot deport you unless you have travel documents. And the travel documents were given by the Kenyan embassy. So sometimes when you're traveling, you're going to Mombasa, mm -hmm. you see this American planes, mm -hmm. huge ones at the airport. Mm -hmm. ah. <laughs> so, so maybe Meleta... <coughs> what? Maybe Meleta Mtuchi. Namatako Ije. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so from the airport where did you go? To Mata Hospital. To Mata Hospital. Yeah. How long how many days in Mata Hospital? Just a few days. The doctors there were really encouraging me. They were like, You should work in the radio, you know, you have a really good accent. I'm sure the Kenyan um they will employ you by the in a found it of tier job kwa radio ama kitu kama hiyo radio gani yoyote utangaze ukora mogi ikizungu yako ya kujiwekelea <laughs> now you are going to cry again. When I go to Mata Hospital, eh. they call my brother. My brother works for um, Kenya Air Force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Apple is still here, my Air Base. My Air Force. So when they call my brother, my brother came to the hospital and I was covered with white bed sheets. So my brother thought I was dead. Mm. And he started crying at Mata Hospital. So he was crying. <coughs> And I opened the bed sheet and I said, Ben, pokato angima. Honey, I'm not dead. I'm, I'm alive. alive. I'm alive. Mm. I just want fish. <laughs> <laughs> so how is Maiti <laughs> asking for fish? <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with this woman? So, so, so you asked for fish immediately? Yeah, I asked for fish. I had not eaten for two months. I was on a hunger strike for two months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they brought for me fish, mm. and I ate, and I got well, and... So kumbe samaki ni dawa. Ha 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 ni dawa. So bada kudla fish, ukapona nini? Eh, yeah, nikapona. After nilikula fish, even nikapona. <laughs> <laughs> then you went, where did you go from? To stay with my brother for a short while, mm. and then I went to stay with my sister, my oldest sister. Mm. Yeah, my oldest sister was so scared, you know, she didn't want me to even go anywhere. She thought I'm going to get arrested again. She was so overprotective. Yeah, she just um, loved me a lot. She just wanted to look for a loan or some money so she, I can go back to school and graduate. But I was like, I want to hustle. So I left her house and went to Mombasa to hustle. And I started selling water. His image is a 20 bob. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Selling water. I didn't even have money to buy the water to sell. So I would leave my ID there and just go sell. Yeah, just go sell. After I make some money I give, I take my ID like that, like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, At what point did you decide let me say? Oh, I, I was writing songs in the US. Remember I told you in jail many Prisoners love me because I would write songs to make fun of officers. I would write songs. So I knew that that was what I could do. I wrote so many songs in jail and in prison. And that is the thing that saved my life. Even the days that uh, the police almost killed me, it's the songs that saved my life. How did the songs save your life? <clears throat> You know, when I lived in jail, I picked up the curse words, you know, how the black Americans talk, yeah? So one day I was... Um, so they cast throughout? They cast and it's just like, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck are you, oh, fucking asshole, whatever, fucking, fucking bitch. You know, just, I picked up that language. And so one day when the police called me a monkey, I was like, motherfucking bitch, I'm no monkey. <laughs> and when I cast her like that after she called me a monkey they took me to the hall and they almost killed me you know the style they killed George Floyd mm -hmm. that thing makes me so sad but the police they were kicking me with their boots and kicking me with their boots and stepping on, on, on my chest until I couldn't breathe and later they said I was trying to kill myself do you really understand what I'm saying Jalas? I do somebody tries to kill you and then says you're trying to kill yourself. And that is the day that I was taken to Suicide Watch and I started writing songs. But they had beaten me almost to death. And the place where I was taken was like a room full of human feces. I'm sorry about that. Now, where I want to, to come to, now you have this talent, you're back here, mm -hmm. you're selling water. 
how did you record this amazing big tune? I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't give a damn. I didn't even think it would go somewhere. You know, the moment I landed in Kenya, I started uh, recording songs, but nobody cared. You saw, I have quite a few songs yeah, on I YouTube. You few, yeah, you yeah. have your latest on Corona. Yeah, latest on Mombasa Raha. Mombasa. And today I have a new song I want to release right here, right now. On your, on your wow! Yeah. Wow! That is an amazing surprise. What's the new song? It's called uh, Tangaza Milimani. It's a Christmas. Oh. Hit, yeah. Give me, give me something about it. Kidogo. <coughs> uh, just like this. Okay. <coughs> Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. He mwaka ime kwangumu sana na watu wawana kakitu. Lakini kama uko na safari kwa mfuliza, mfuliza, mfuliza bana. Usikose kujibamba nyumbani na watu wako. Hakuna <laughs> pale meka fofo fofo. Ama lele lele. Ama tsa 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 tsa. So how did they, I don't give a damn go viral? I don't give a damn. How did it go viral? Wow, well, after recording it we just posted. I think I know how it went viral. The haters went made it viral. Because when I don't give a damn came out, I posted it in a group, in a Facebook group. And they started insulting me. Look at you, you don't know how to do your makeup, you look ugly, you're fat, you're too fat, you have a potty hanging out and you're wearing a bikini. So one people was tagging ten people to come and laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> so as they laughed? They it laughed, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. So ten people are tagging ten, 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 ten. Come look at this, she doesn't know how to sing, she doesn't know how to dress, her hair looks terrible. <laughs> Oh. Oh. And it, at first it affected me for two days and then I was like, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't give a damn. Damn, 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 damn. Yeah. Give me that song, Kido, you know, how it starts. I don't want to know. Yeah, I don't want to know. Mm. Mm. Don't you come to me mm. telling me about so and so. Don't you come to me telling me about her, telling me about him, telling me about them. Don't you come to me telling me what she said. Don't you come to me telling me what he said, telling me what they say. He said, she said, he said, she said, he said, he said, I don't wanna know, I don't wanna know, I don't give. Can I talk? I don't give. What? Yeah. This one now we give a damn. Could you carry the weight to our car? Yes, in charge, please. All right. Okay. Okay. Sapol. Chikire apa. Okay. Okay. Hey, twako. What would you like us to do for you? How could you know, now this is serious, you know? <clears throat> okay. Okay, what I really want you to do... <clears throat> mm. You know, I don't have to go into any details, but... Uh, Desperate times calls for desperate measures. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some things that I did that I can't do now. There are some things that I did, you know, to earn some money, to pay rent, and I can't do now. <laughs> so, I'm actually stuck, you know. Right now, <laughs> 
I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent. I don't know how I'm going to buy food for my kids. I don't know, like, like, I really need help. Because there are some things that I used to do that I can't do now. And I don't have to go into details. I can't do because I want to be better. I want to be an example. I have, like, <coughs> many, many young people, you know, who are looking up to me and they want me to be their mentor. But um, they want me to help them with A, B, C, and D. And I want to help. Um, what I want you to do, the last for me, is to please hold my hand, please. When you say hold your hands, I get that a lot of time. Hold my hand, hold. So is it to support your music? Is it to, what, what is holding your hand? Okay. Holding my hands, at least show me, okay, you have, um, how do you publicize yourself? How do I turn this popularity into money? so that I can be able to live. You know, now I can say in a way I have the fame, but can I eat fame? No. Yeah, if I say, I'm a artist, give me your house for free. Yeah, can somebody give me their house for free because I'm a artist? I can't, you know, they can't. So I still have um, bills to pay, I have rent, I have, you know, to buy food. And right now I honestly have zero, zero income coming in. Wow, well, I can see Tim Jalas when you are asking before we do anything. Mm -hmm. Maybe you give us your Mpesa number. Kila mtu anauliza Mpesa number, Mpesa number, Mpesa number. You can see how many oh. people want to wow. at least put some money. Uh, things. Even as you, as you, mm -hmm. as we look on how to be able to help you. Mm. Is there an Mpesa number that you can give me right now? Yes, of course. What's the number? It's uh, 0740. 0740 60 60 72 72 27 27 yes and the battery died on the number but it's working it's active the battery died yeah so maybe if you call it what, it will na, not what name will in. come marceline atieno nyango oh marceline atieno onyango yes uh picture clear can you put the yeah. put for me the 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 number there wow so I need you to show me uh, how, how do you post, when do you post, how do you gain many followers, how do you monetize YouTube, how do you, like, like um, how to get from here to where you are. You are a millionaire, Jalas. Hey. <laughs> I want to be a millionaire like you. Kuna watu wa nyumbani, wanasikia imamba. Wataka wa niroge. <laughs> and talking of Urogi, by the way, <laughs> talking of Urogi, on a serious note, I want to call for international prayers. There are prayer warriors already, even fasting on my behalf. Can you believe that? Of course, yes. That there will come people, to pass. Yeah. Give me that number again. A picture, please, please, it's put up. it up. Zero uh, seven. We need 40. to pin it up so that uh, we can be able to, all right. 60, 72, 27, Guys, yes, yes. Zero seven forty, sixty. 60, so I, no, it's okay. Okay, okay. 0, 7, 40, 60, 72, 27. Yes. Uh, 2,709 people are watching. Wow. Let's just say 1,000 of you can send 100 shillings today. Wow. That would be a good 100,000 for you to to do something least, with, yeah, to go yeah. pay rent and do things yeah guys please 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 you heard this story this is i think you've told me so much than you've ever told anyone in any, yes very true yeah in any interview in any interview yeah wow zero seven forty sixty seventy two twenty seven so Masi here mm -hmm. is going through a very hard time where she is famous everybody gets in knows her through her YouTube work. Definitely.
for you to monetize your YouTube and everything, I'm going to talk to my team okay. to picture clear. She, he, before you leave here, mm -hmm. they would have helped you put up monetization and AdSense and everything. And how to stop people from uh, copyright, you know? No, those ones are oh, okay, The okay. more they copy, the okay. more you become famous, okay. the more you okay. come to your page. Okay. You people be up, okay, Julikana Kidogo, that's when Anza writes, writes in English, please. So, 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 picture uh, clear is going to help her uh, mm -hmm. do this and put up all this. I really, there's this thing called, can you help me get a job? Yeah. Even if I was to get you a job, what, what job are you looking for? Um, okay, MC, mm, even in a club, you know, uh, I live in Kitengela. Mm. They have yeah, like, we have pavilion. Yeah, pavilion. My, I've friend, gone of, to my friend owns pavilion. Eh? Really? My friend is called Churchill. Oh, yeah. I was told that please talk to Churchill to give me a job in Pavilion. At least to I can what? perform. Ah, to sing. To sing. Every Sunday they always have live performance. Somebody has my phone. Ah. <laughs> Let me check if I can get him on live. Oh my God. He gets really busy sometimes. This oh, guy. okay, okay. Um, so you want to perform at Pavilion? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've gone there like three times. You've been there three times? Yeah. I, yeah, it's a string. And if it rings, then we'll pick up. Hey! Hey! Aho? Aho? Hey! up on a Masi at least and we are live. Masi? And I'm back here in Gomayake. I don't give a da 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 I don't give a damn. Yes, I do. Sasa. Sasa. Yeah. Anasema naishi kitengela. Eh. Uh -huh. Na na pavilion kila siku. Eh. Yeah. Anasema lazima umpatie kazi ya perform pavilion hii Sunday or any other Sunday one CV. Akuja asumbue. Okay, sasa. Eh. Sasa mwambie amejikaza sana. Eh. Ameyangana sana mwambie hivyo. Eh eh. Kuna kuna kutumia namba ule jama upana hiyo ka program. Okay. Ah! Ndio ah! ah! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so excited. Oh my god. I'm talking to Cecil. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I've been to Pavilion so many times asking for a job. Can I open a show? And they said, yeah, when we need you, we'll call you. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> so now, uh -huh. remember to my brother number, your manager. Okay. Then you can. Yeah. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, 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 uh, uh, organize, bro. Eh? Uh, I'll call the guy so that we can organize for her to perform this sun, this Sunday, whichever Sunday. Eh? Okay. Thank you so much. You are live on Bonga Najalas, my brother. Uh, you, now make it regular. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, bro. Well, I appreciate it. Wow, Jalas. So, I'll, 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 I'll see what I'm able to do. Eh? Okay. And uh, I'll get the number and. Uh, We'll be able to see what's up, Cynthia. Yes. Oh, thank you. All right. You. So it's thank been a long you. interview. There's a lot. I'll also talk to you after this. We can yeah. see what we are able to do and yeah. how I'm able to help you, Cynthia. Yes. If you at least you get then Tim Jalas have also come really heavy here. Uh, on uh, what? On, we are on uh, two thousand eight hundred and thirty nine people watching. Wow. Um, and guys, Masi has requested me that I pin up this number. If you know you have any job, any job out there that yeah. Marcy can be doing as she stabilizes herself definitely yeah. with his two sons here in Kenya now. She's back home. She's just trying to see how she's able to get herself back together and we take it from there. Is that okay? Thank you so much. Thank yes. you so much. This has been Bonga Najalans and definitely the program is... Uh, <laughs> it's, it, this is Jalango TV and the program is Bonga Nadelas. I want to send anything, whatever little you can get, 0740 60 72 27. Something for Marcy to at least go pay her rent. She's famous, but she's broke now. But then yeah. there's a lot of things we can still help. I'll also see if I can call a few friends of mine. We see what we are able to do. Thank you. Thank you so much. And until tomorrow. Yeah. Can I please thank everybody who is standing with me? You okay, know, thank them. Please. Uh, there's a lady named uh, Linda. 
she's the best she's in all my videos as a vixen she takes really good care of my kids and i'm just really grateful to her she she does more than a sister can do uh linda emily thank you so much thank you so much sister grace sister grace dressed me for my new video the christmas video um i have uh diana Ketch. diana Ketch is more than like the most genuine person i've ever met she does my nails for free she does my hair and she does my makeup and she calls me regularly is your hair okay she's doing all this for free so if you can please just go to her salon and show her love too she does this not only to me but to many 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 people thanks to her what is the name of her salon is uh this salon Marsa Beat, yeah. Marsa Beat Plaza. Ah, Mar Marsa Beat Plaza. Yeah, on mezzanine floor. Uh -huh. If you can go to her salon just to show her love. She does a lot, a lot from her heart. And she's genuine, 100%. So I'm praying that God to open doors for her. And uh, I have uh, many people who are volunteering. Eric has been volunteering to... Uh, <sighs> I have a, a whole team. Mm. Yes. Joy, I have... Okay. How much is your rent? My rent is 25k. 25k? Yes. So I'll pay for you two months. Is that okay? Wow. wow. Is that okay? Oh my god. <laughs> no. Let me pay for you two months first. Then you take it from there. God. Lisa. Mm. Thank better, you. Better be. Just maybe for the first two months as you. Thank you so much. God bless you so much. Oh my God. God <laughs> bless you. Yes, I hope you please. So this is this is fifty thousand for your. Let me take it from there. Thank you guys. It's been a good show. <laughs> Don't cry. What? Go pay rent as you find your. This was a good show and still you started crying. <laughs> thank you thank you so much so god bless you thank you god and bless guys, you too keep on supporting this lady uh, her number is 07 40 60 72 27 marceline onyango let's wow. go for lunch now now i want to know i give a damn now <laughs> We appreciate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jalas. Asante. Thank you. Thank you we so much.